we have this conversation about strength training. So if we know that estrogen is tightly tied to strength training, how do we maximize it for a woman? And why is it so critical? So we know that it's the use of muscular or resistance to build muscular strength. And we have a schematic. We have a power-based end all the way up to our hypertrophy end. And we have conversations within it. But the whole idea of baselining resistance training of wherever you are at whatever age is really to get the benefit of speed and strength. Because when we are older or living on our own, we want to be able to pick something up and put it overhead. As we get older, especially as, as women, we lose those fast twitch and power fibers. One of the very first things that comes to play when someone comes to see me, it's like, I don't understand. My running pace is slowed and I can't open this jar anymore. <laughs> and this is before they start getting any kind of signs and symptoms of perimenopause, because that's one of the very first things to go when you start having hormone flux. I also see this in younger athletes who are on the cusp of becoming amenorrheic through low energy availability. So we start to see that they are not recovering as much and they're not progressing in their training. We start looking at their strength and power metrics, like what's going on? Because we'll see a change in strength and power metrics before we see a change in their aerobic and anaerobic capacity. So having resistance training and understanding what all goes into it, it can give really good insight of how we can help our female athletes. So we also know that if someone has low bone density, regardless of age, you want to add strength training. We also, of course, I've already talked about metabolic control. We know joint stability and balance. The other big thing is brain health. We all talk about brain health, and it's becoming more and more apparent the younger we are, the more we need to pay attention to it. One of the best things to do is strength training because it increases the neuroplasticity and allows the brain to keep understanding and morphing and learning so that you're protecting it, starting now, all the way up to when you're 80 or 90. But the biggest thing really is the confidence that it brings. How many people do strength training on a regular basis? That whole side, have to raise your hands. Yeah. So when you walk out of the gym after a big lift, how do you feel? Right, you feel great. You're taking up space, you feel energized. How do you feel after you do a sprint interval session? For me, I feel demoralized because I can't sprint which, but anyway. So there's this confidence thing. So if you're trying to get people involved in activity, like one of the first things you can do is help them build confidence by giving them the ability to lift and to be strong. And trust me, I come from a long time endurance background. I've raced Ironman, I raced road bikes professionally, I've done Xterra, I've done ultra runs, I've done all of that really long stuff. And now anything over an hour, I'm like, ugh. So it is a learned thing, and the confidence is great. 